As you might know, my full-time job is a web and media guy over at the Come Home Network. We're an organization that works with people who are on the journey towards the Catholic Church, helping them with answers, with connections, with networking, with any support that we can give them. You can check them out over at chnetwork.org. You can check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash coming home network. Well, every week I put out a new video, either an insights or a signpost video. This week is going to be a signpost video that's a short part of someone's conversion story. My coworker Matt Swim and I were in Boston a few months ago, and while we were there, we decided to go to my old parish, Our Lady Help of Christians in Newton, and tape my own interview to do a signpost and a few insights videos. So this week, we're putting my own signpost video up on the Coming Home Network YouTube channel. You can click on the card right here to go directly to it. But I wanted to put the extended version or the director's cut of the signpost interview up on my own channel. And so now you can watch the director's cut of my signpost interview. My name is Seth Payne, and I'm the developer of web and new media for the Coming Home Network. When I was growing up, faith was very important to my parents and to my whole family. Uh, my parents became Christians. They accepted Christ as their savior just a few years before I was born. And so I was born going to a small Baptist church in, uh, in Massachusetts. And, and they were, from what I perceived, they were really into their faith. They, we went to church every Sunday morning. They had a Bible study they went to every Wednesday night. You know, we went to prayer services a lot on, uh, on Sunday evenings. And, and we were really involved in the church, I remember, growing up. The first time I remember thinking about my faith was I was around seven, I think it was. I was in the second grade, and I went up to my pastor, and I asked him why I couldn't go up and receive communion. And he looked at me, in very simple words, he said, well, do you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? I said, well, I don't know. I don't know what that means. And, and so he said, well, have you, you know, you, all you have to do is you just say, you know, Jesus, I'm sorry for all the bad things that I've done, and I want you to come and live in my heart. And if you do that, then he will. He'll come and live with you, and then you can come up and receive communion. Because you know, he said, that's important. You need to have a relationship with Jesus before you can receive communion. I said, okay. I thought about that, and uh, I don't know how much later it was, but I remember at, at the time I was going to a private Christian school a couple of towns over, and, um, and, so, we ha and so we rode over in a, bus, in a van. So there's, there's a family that had a big van, they drove us all to school. So I remember sitting in the van, and it was a rainy day, and I was looking out the window. I just remember remembering what my pastor said. And I looked out the window at the rain, and I remember saying, Jesus, I'm sorry for all the bad things that I've done, and I want you to come and live in my heart. And, and I, I knew that something happened at that point. And so, and so that's when I started really kind of thinking about faith on my own. And then from there, I just kind of slowly grew, grew in my faith. When I was in middle school, I really began reading my Bible and spending time in my Bible, and spending time in prayer. And I really, and, and I started getting into leadership roles in youth groups I was attending. And really getting into it when we would go on a youth retreat. Delving more into what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. And I remember struggling a lot with, um, with what does it mean that I want to be a good Christian, that I'm spending time in the Bible, but I continue to sin. And so I remember having a few times in my life between that first time when I was seven and you know, going into college where I thought, well, maybe, maybe I didn't do it right. I've learned a lot since then. Maybe I need to try it again. And so you know, praying that prayer again, asking God to forgive me for all the bad things I've done and asking him to come into my heart, thinking at the time, well, maybe... Maybe now I'm a real Christian. Um, as I got into high school, I, I spent a lot of time in Scripture, and I was you know, on the leadership board of a couple of different youth groups. And I even, I even started a Bible study at my public school, my public high school. And uh, people saw me as a pretty serious Christian. Um, 
I, I think fortunately, I don't think anyone saw me as a Bible thumper, but, uh, but they saw me as someone that, that talked about their faith a lot. Um, my best friend in middle school and high school, he wasn't a Christian at all. He, he was part of a, he did a lot of new age type stuff. He was into meditation. But we were best friends and we got into so many deep conversations. And we never had a conversation where I said, well, you know, I've told you all this stuff. You need to become a Christian now. But we, we just shared what was going on in our own spiritual walks. He shared things about his meditation. I shared things about what I was reading in scripture and how I was learning about my faith. And two years after we graduated high school, we kept in touch a little bit, but we started to drift apart. I found out that two years after we graduated high school, he accepted Christ into his life and he became a Christian. And it really impacted me that it was, it is that, it is that everyday relationship where you where you share your faith, where you have the biggest impact. I had an experience, I think I was a sophomore in high school, where we had some of the more serious kids in our youth group. We got together on a Saturday morning with our youth pastor, and we talked about what does it mean to evangelize? What does it mean to share your faith? And it was with a few other youth groups. And then in the afternoon, all, every youth group kind of went on their own and we went over to one of the local malls and we got a kiosk right in the middle of the mall and we took turns for I think a half an hour or 45 minutes where two people would be in the kiosk and we had a survey of five questions. And the first question is, do you ever think of God or spiritual things? And so we were paired off into two people and most everyone could walk around the mall until it was your turn. I was paired with the youth pastor. And he was, he was the kind of Christian that his main goal was to make as many Christians as possible. He just wanted to say, okay, you know, seven people got saved today, or, you know, 15 people got saved today. And he, he was not the best evangelist. And I remember this one moment where I was talking to one person and he was talking to another person. And he was talking to this woman who was a Muslim. And I could just hear from the back him trying to tell her all the reasons why she was wrong as a Muslim and why she needed to be a Christian. And, and then this woman came up to me and she was a Mormon. And I remember just having a wonderful conversation with her. She told me some things that she believed as a Mormon. I told her some of the things that I believed as an evangelical Christian. We had a wonderful conversation. I asked her some of the, you know, the, some of the questions. And you know, of course, she did think about God and spiritual things. We had a wonderful conversation and then, and then she left. And, you know, I remember thinking after that, like, I, I remember praying. I said, God, I hope that something I said made her think. I know that there was no way I was going to convince her of anything in the three or four minutes I had to talk to her. And so I knew that it wasn't going to help telling her that she was wrong, that, that I needed to just show her my own life and hopefully in my own, in my own life and just talking to her in those few minutes, she could see Christ in me. And that, that was kind of that first experience of really just trying to live out my faith and have people see Christ in me. So the first moment that didn't make me think about the Catholic Church, but sort of primed me for that was I was on a cross-cultural trip with, uh, with my evangelical college in England. And we went to a service at Westminster Abbey. And it was the first time in my life where I had experienced something of faith that was that old. And I remember thinking, people have been worshiping in this location, in this way, for hundreds of years. And I started to feel a hunger for, for something that was older than the churches that I had experienced growing up. So a couple months after that trip, I moved back up to Boston and started going to a non-denominational church in the Boston area. And I, right away, I joined a, a Bible study. And one of the leaders of the Bible study was, was a man named Tom. He had left the church when he was 13. And, uh, but he still, there are things that he loved about the church. He would, he would bring St. Francis. He would bring St. Augustine. He even bring, brought some passages from the catechism to our Bible study. Uh, we watched Brother, Son, Sister Moon one night. And, 
And I'm like, this is, this is really interesting. This kind of sounds like that old, that ancient faith that I experienced a little bit at Westminster Abbey. And so you know, Tom and I hit it off right away and we became great friends. And he's a big reader. I'm a big reader. And we just started reading together. Uh, I remember we went to Barnes and Nobles all the time just to, we went to the theology section, the Christianity section, and we just started getting all these books. And we would just hang out and read and talk about what we were reading. And people would come up to us, ask us what we're reading, and we would get into these deep conversations. I started being drawn to this, this faith that was so much more deep and complex than I had ever experienced as an evangelical. And so that was, that's what really started drawing me to it. Then one day I was having breakfast with a friend of mine and she said that she had grown up Catholic. And because I was talking to her about the, these things I was reading with Tom and she, she, there were a lot of things she didn't like about the Catholic church, but she missed the mass. And every once in a while she said, she said there was a comfort in the mass and she missed it. And so I said, well, I've never been to mass and I've been reading all this stuff, I'd love to experience it sometime. Why don't we go to Mass somewhere? She's like, oh, that'd be great. And so we pull out the yellow pages, we open it up, look at all the listings of the Catholic churches, and I saw one that had an etching of the front of the, build, the church building. And I said, that's really beautiful, let's go there. And this is the church that we, we went to. And we walked in and I was just, I was just struck by the beauty of this church. And so we came in, we got here about 15 minutes early. We sat down. It's my first time in my life I've ever had a kneeler. And so I can't remember if I kneeled or not. I, I think I might have. I'm like, oh, this is a great way to pray. So I remember kneeling. I was just praying silently. And this woman came up to us, and because there's no one else, there were like maybe three or four people in the church. She came up to us and she said, would you two like to present the gifts? And I looked at her and I said, uh, I, don't, I don't know what that is. And she said, well, about halfway through the Mass, I'll come up, tap your shoulder, and you'll come back, and then you'll bring up the bread and the wine and present it to the priest. And I looked at her and said, but I'm not Catholic. And she said, oh, oh, don't worry about it, that's fine. So my first time ever stepping into a Catholic church, and I was presenting the gifts. And you know, looking back, I, I see that as one of the moments of, of God's humor in my life, that saying, you know, this is where you're going to end up. And... And I loved the Mass. I loved the liturgy. Um, I, I loved the, the readings. I loved the homily. I loved the, just the whole experience. And so I started coming back occasionally to, to this parish. And um, kind of fast forward, I, I, um, I spent a year in Peru. And when I was there, I started going to Mass there. And it was there that I experienced the universality of the church, that I had been to Mass here enough that I knew basically what happened in the Mass. And even though I didn't really know the language that well, I wasn't really that great with my Spanish, I knew what was happening when I was in Peru in the Mass. And then when I came back after a year in Peru, I started going every week. I came here to Mass in the morning I was going to my non-denominational church in the evening. About a year after that, I decided I, I need to take this seriously. I, if I, if I, I don't want to just go to Mass, I started feeling drawn. If I'm going to go to Mass and I really, if I think it's true and I think it's good and beautiful, then I need to seriously consider this and say, well, maybe I need to be Catholic. And so, I stopped going to my non-denominational church. I went to Mass every week. Uh, and a couple months after that, I looked up the RCA director, contacted her, and said, you know what, if she, she's asking me, well, have you been to Mass? Have you, she's asking me all these questions and basically asking, am I ready to consider becoming Catholic? And I said, I, I'm, I'm at that point. And I left with such a sense from God that I was doing the right thing. I had the most profound peace the rest of the day. And so I, I went through RCA, I, uh, and then I was confirmed 
uh, Easter 2008. The great thing about the fact that my first time in Mass, I was asked to present the gifts, tied in to what Father John, the, the priest that confirmed me, said to me a number of times as I was going through that process of RSAA. I've, I had talked to him a lot, and he ended up being my spiritual director for a while. But I had talked to him a lot about my experience as an evangelical. I talked to him about my passions as an evangelical, that I loved small group ministry, that Bible study was so important, short-term missions was so important to me. I've, I'd been volunteering with a nonprofit for a number of years and had gone on at least 10 different missions trips, short-term missions trips to different countries all over the world. And that was so important to me. And he told me a number of times, he said, you should never leave anything behind that you have from your days as an evangelical. He said, bring it with you. Bring it with you into the Catholic Church because we need it. And so the, the image of presenting the gifts, my first Mass, was so profound because through Father John, God was telling me that I need to bring all that I have and present it to him. And, and that we all bring things with us into the church. One of the great gifts of having so many converts in the church is that we have come from so many different rich backgrounds and we all have things that we bring with us into the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church right now, I feel, is going through a renaissance. And a big part of that renaissance is this, is this bringing in of so many gifts from so many different traditions. This parish was so welcoming and was so warm. And I met so many wonderful people here that this is my, this is my home still. I still see this parish as my home because I was, this is where I became Catholic. This, I was here when I met my wife. This is where we got married. This is where our first daughter was baptized. And forgive me if I sound like I'm about to tear up because I am. <laughs> that this, this parish to me is the face of the Catholic Church that I will always see. And I am so thankful for, for Father John and for all the, all the parishioners that, that welcomed me and brought me into their family here. And this is where I really started to see the family of God. The body of Christ is the family of God and being welcomed into that family. I hope you enjoyed that extended Director's Cut version of my signpost video. Click up here to go to the Coming Home Network YouTube channel to see other signposts and insights videos that we've done. On that same Boston trip, we were able to interview Peter Kreeft, and so we have a few of his videos already up. You can watch another video up here. If you like what I'm doing on this channel and you want to join this community, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you like this video, and that little church bell to get a notification and want to put up a new video. I'll see you again next week, and God bless.